Did you know that the boogeyman has a grandfather? <gasps> it's true. He's called the bogey beast, and he loves to play tricks on people. <laughs> we'll meet him later on in our story today. Well, hi there, Reader Adventure. Happy Halloween, and welcome to Storytime for Kids. I'm Mrs. McCurley, and today's story is called The Bogey Beast. It's about an old woman and a mythical trickster. <laughs> and let's get started. The Bogey Beast by Flora Annie Steele. There was once a woman who was very, very cheerful, though she had little to make her so for she was old and poor and lonely. She lived in a little bit of a cottage and earned a scant living by running errands for her neighbors, getting a bite to eat here, a sup there, as a reward for her services. So she made shift to get on and always looked as spry and cheery as if she had not a want in the world. Now, one summer evening, as she was trotting along, full of smiles as ever, along the high road to her hovel, what should she see but a big black pot lying in the ditch. Oh, goodness me, she cried. That would be just the very thing for me. <laughs> if only I had something to put in it. But I haven't. Now, who could have left that in the ditch? And she looked about her, expecting the owner would not be far off. But she could see nobody. Maybe there's a hole in it, she went on, and that's why it's been cast away. But it would do fine to put a flower in it for my window, so I'll just take it home with me. And with that, she lifted the lid and looked inside. <gasps> Mercy me, she cried, fair amazed. If it isn't full of gold pieces, <gasps> how's my luck? And so it was ramming of great gold coins. Well, at first she simply stood stock still, wondering if she was standing on her head or on her heels. <laughs> then she began saying, Lox, but I do feel rich. I feel awful rich. After she had said this many times, she began to wonder how she was to get her treasure home. It was too heavy for her to carry, and she could see no better way than to tie the end of her shawl to it and drag it behind her like a go-kart. It will soon be dark, she said to herself as she trotted along. So much the better. The neighbors will not see what I'm bringing home and I shall have all night to myself. and be able to think what I'll do. <laughs> Mayhap I'll buy a grand house and just sit by the fire with a cup of tea. <laughs> and do no work at all like a queen. Or maybe I'll bury it in the garden foot and just keep a bit in the old china teapot on the chimney piece. Or maybe, <laughs> goody, goody, I feel so grand, I don't know what to do with myself. By this time, she was a bit tired of dragging such a heavy object <sighs> and stopped to rest a while. She turned to look at her treasure. And lo, it wasn't a pot of gold at all. It was nothing but a lump of silver. She stared at it, rubbed her eyes, and stared at it again. Well, I never, she said at last, and me thinking it was a pot of gold. <laughs> I must have been dreaming. But this is luck. Silver is far less trouble. Easier to mine, not so easily stolen. <laughs> Them gold pieces would have been the death of me. And with this great lump of silver. So she went off again, planning what she would do and feeling as rich as rich. Until, becoming a bit tired again, <sighs> she stopped to rest. And gave a look round to see if her treasure was safe. And she saw nothing but a great lump of iron. <gasps> well, I never, she said again, and I mistaking it for silver. <laughs> I must have been dreaming. But this is luck. 
It's real convenient. I can get penny pieces for pieces of iron. And penny pieces are a deal handier for me than gold or silver. Why, I should have never slept a week for fear of being robbed. But a penny piece comes in real useful. And I shall sell that iron for a lot and be rich. <laughs> Growing rich. So on she trotted, full of plans as to how she would spend her penny pieces. Till, once more, she stopped. <sighs> to rest and looked round her to see if her treasure was safe. And this time, she saw nothing but a big stone. Well, I never, she cried, full of smiles. <laughs> and to think I mistook it for iron. <laughs> I must have been dreaming. But here's luck indeed, and me wanting a stone. Terribly bad to stick open my gate. Ah, my... <laughs> But it's a change for the better. It's a fine thing to have good luck. So, all in a hurry to see how the stone would keep the gate open, she trotted off down the hill till she came to her own cottage. She unlatched the gate and then turned to unfasten her shawl from the stone, which lay on the path behind her. Aye, it was a stone sure enough. There was plenty of light to see it lying there. Deuce and peaceful as a stone should be. So, she bent over it to unfasten the shawl and when, oh my! All of a sudden it gave a jump, a squeal, Whoa! and in one moment was as big as a haystack. Then it let down four great lanky legs and threw out two long ears nourished a great long tail and <laughs> romped off, kicking and squealing and <laughs> winning and laughing like a naughty, mischievous boy. <laughs> the old woman stared after it until it was fairly out of sight. Then she burst out laughing too. <laughs> well, she chuckled, <laughs> I am in luck. Quite the luckiest person in hereabouts. <laughs> Fancy my seeing the bogey beast all myself <laughs> and making myself free with it too. <laughs> my goodness, I do feel that uplifted. <laughs> that grand. So she went into her cottage and spent the evening chuckling over her good luck. Wow, that was a fun story. I hope you liked it. Be sure to join us next week where Halloween continues at Storytime for Kids. And until then, I'll see you on our next video. Happy Storytime. Bye.